Look at all you early risers. I haven't seen this many people on before eight o'clock in a while. Good morning. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Letha. Good morning, Diego. Good morning, Mara, Frank, Jacob, Good Nicole, morning, Lucy, Robin. How is everybody? Great, and yourself? I'm um, doing fine and dandy, fine and dandy. How's Miss Mara? You got a long face this morning. You must be focused. I was trying to figure out when family reunion really gets going. I was trying to find 9 a.m. That's our time, though, right? Yep. 9 a.m. our time. But they started earlier last time. Yeah. We can't play there. So I wasn't sure if we were doing this or not. So. Yeah, I've kept most of my calls intact for this week. Just to help y'all out. Um, yesterday I was in the chat room in the family reunion and yep. I met someone from Colorado who possibly gonna send me a referral from someone who when they're they're gonna sell their house over there and retire over here. So there you that was go. a good referral. That's what it's all about, getting out there and communicating. Anyone I, else get it get in the chats or anything yesterday? Not this time, but Last year during it was mega camp, right? And uh, masterminds, I captured as many people as I could in other states <laughs> and I emailed them a little blurb. And this year I've been sending them, I don't know if you guys um, know, and now I have to remember his name. Um, there's these awesome uh, drone videos of Tucson. So for people that don't know Tucson very well, Brad Holt. So if you look him up on YouTube, he's got these beautiful, <laughs> Uh, drone videos of Tucson and so a lot of people don't know that much about Tucson and I've been sending them to the agent and one of them wrote back what a great listing and I was like okay she wasn't really paying attention but at least she looked at the email um, and I have followed up with a few of them you know some of them say they might have a referral at some point but anyway so just a way to follow up with folks in the future because it's nice to have something interesting to say to people right and yes so here's some scripting ar around the referral aspect of there is as you meet people in other states, counties, areas, put them in your database, but send them an email that just says, hey, my name is Robin or Jason. Here's a little bit about me. I service this zip code, put a picture of a zip code map around Tucson, some Red Rock to Rio Rico, wherever you're gonna work and, and specialize and put those cities in there. Tucson, Marana, Oro Valley, Green Valley, Sarita Valley, Valley Valley, Upper Valley, Lower Valley, East Valley, West Valley, all of those. And then just tell them a little bit about yourself. Connect with them on a human level. This in the email could be a one-sided email, but you're telling a lot about, you know. Hi, my name is Big Dan Caldwell. Here's my son Stone. This is we we service Southern Arizona. I'm the productivity coach. Here's my my team of awesomeness. You know, I've been in Tucson for 25 years. I love dogs. I have a dog named Moose and a dog named Cargo. And then they get to know who you are, even if they never respond to an email. But they're seeing your email. They're seeing who you are, and because I get updates once a month from this agent, I don't even know where she's at, but I'm sure I'd look her up. I think it's Idaho, Iowa, or Idaho. And every month she sends me an email. I don't, I don't read it to be honest. I just thought it was a really good idea. I have an agent in Iowa and Idaho, so PC coaches. But it was interesting because she's kind of set that precedent out there. She sends me an email of who she is, updates in her life, updates in the market, updates in her area. And then I got one in Washington that's always updating now what's going on in Washington. So keep that in mind when you're making these connections of how you follow up in the, in the long term. It's not just the conversations you have on this chat plan or anything in family reunion. It's what you can do long scope too. So. So basically, she has you on a smart plan. Exactly. Exactly. Automation is a good thing. Scripts and tricks, Kyle. Okay. Got a new guy jumping on. So top one. So click on the link. And then click on the Zoom link. How is you guys? It's a beautiful Tuesday. What awesomeness have you been dealing with this week that we can help you scrub around? Paige drinking her coffee. Sarah's steering her coffee. Cat's looking like she's going to attack. Robin's in the dark. You guys are super quiet. I don't like it. Let's get out there. 
So I have a showing today. My um, my offer that I worked so fast and so diligently on yesterday was in competition with four other offers and we had offered 11,000 over asking and they took another offer. But uh, now we're looking at another house in Tucson today at three, so bonus. Nice. Did you ask what, what you got beat by? I did. She said she couldn't disclose that at this time. At least you asked. Yeah. She said that um, she had four offers and all four offers were over asking price. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous now because we have to price it for the comps, but the offers that come in are always over ask. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Dan, I have a question. So with, you know, a lot of things going over asking price, what has been kind of like the general um, decision with when it doesn't appraise? Is the seller coming down in price or are they expecting the buyer to, to pay the difference? Well, it's, that's a conversation you have with your clients. Well, I'm just wondering like what has been the trend? There, there is no trend. Okay. Yeah, my um, so my uh, my ex husband, he's buying a house in Florida, and the same exact thing happened to him. And it, he was he would he's under contract, but if he didn't want to, so the appraisal came in ten thousand less than what he's purchasing it for. So he had to meet them in the middle, or else he would have lost it, and they, it would have gone to uh, one of the other buyers that's just standing by. So I think it's all circumstantial. Okay, so they met in the middle, like they paid five grand, yeah. he paid five grand. Yep, that's right. Okay. Yeah. But knowing I have a <clears throat> thousand dollars is a huge hit on the sales price. Massive, massive difference. What's your uh, recommendation? I have a uh, 10 o'clock appraisal that um, they went a little above the, uh, but the, uh, the house has like $65,000 worth of upgrades. Um, should I give them that list of all the upgrades? Absolutely. You guys bring these questions to our, our question time at 845 or at 330 so that people can jump on. And I'm sure there's others that have those questions too. That's why we have those time slots there. So now this, these are some great conversations to have in those times so others can hear the conversations as well. But definitely, Jason, take a list of every upgrade, everything, even if you replace the base molding next to the master bathroom. I don't care if it's an upgrade or something repaired, repaired replaced or anything, have that in there. So good morning, cool, BB. Thanks. Good morning, Annette. Good morning, Adriana. Morning. All right. I want to welcome Kyle. Kyle, this is Kyle. He's new with us. He's got that new agent smell and everything. So hey everybody. So. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. All right. We're going to go back to basics today. I want, I want to just touch on day one. What does Ford mean? Paige, let's see if she remembers. Ford? Yeah. What does Ford stand for? Oh, that's an acronym. Um... Not just a vehicle. <laughs> I actually don't know. That's what I want to talk about. So having having conversations around a Ford method is what we're talking about. What is it, Ms. Bender? Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Don't know what to talk about? There's what you talk about. The R is, does not stand for real estate. Family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Family, occupation, not real estate, and dreams. When we're having calls around the Ford method, it allows us to gain rapport quickly because we're, we're anchoring on the four topics that usually get people the most energetic about a conversation. Your family. If you have no kids, no loved ones or other, and you have a cat, is that your family? Right, Jacob? Yep. That is your cat. That is your family. That is your blood. Your family can be fur babies. Your family can be your friends. Your family can be anything. So when you ask them, hey, how's things going on in your life? How are your cats? How are your dogs? How are your kids? We're asking questions about family. How's your cousin in Milwaukee? I heard that your aunt had COVID. How is she doing? When you remember things that are key, important to people about their family, including fur babies or fishies, whatever, people align with that. They connect with it. Now we go to occupation. Why is it important that we ask questions about occupation? 
find out if they're still employed, to find out if they've gotten a raise, how things are going financially for them. So they're going to ask you what you do as well. Reciprocal. Frank's got it. Robin, you're on the right path. What is the second most voluminous thing we deal with every day? Work, money. Everything we do revolves around what we're doing, right? If it's not family time, we're at work. So occupations, inevitably they're gonna ask you about yours. Hey, Mr. Frank, how's your family? Great to hear, how's work going? That's fantastic. Oh, me, I'm in real estate still. Yeah, it's going well. Thanks to friends and family like you sending me all your referrals. Recreations. Why is it important to talk about recreation? Build rapport. Rapport. People gotta, yeah. People gotta have fun. Knowing about their hobbies. If you know what somebody gets, you know, gets excited about, if you know that they like to play My Little Pony at the park on Sundays. And you ask them, how was the My Little Pony tournament that happened this last weekend? They're like, oh my God, he remembered me. I can't believe it. Right, Jason? Jason is the king at remembering small details about people. Tell they're random the hobbies, they're random activities because it makes people remember you. Ms. Mara, go ahead. I got to know, is that a thing? I have no idea. <laughs> You're making stuff up. Like, I just wanted to be informed because I know I'm not hip, but if that's a thing, I wanted to know. <laughs> I was just trying to come up with the most random things I could so I don't offend somebody. But in the off chance that somebody does like those things, I do apologize. I am not doing anything to anchor at you, okay? <laughs> so, but the recreation side of things, understand their hobbies, get to know who they are. If it's also important if you know that they love to hike and you guys have a conversation in the future about buying and selling houses, you might be able to tell them homes that are located near great hiking areas, right? If you know that they're an, an UTV guy, like someone likes to go off-roading, maybe you can find an area that has easy access to UTV trails, right? These are things that are important, not just to have a conversation with, but there's the mechanics behind it. If they're into cycling, they could uh, live by the loop. Right? One of the most desirable places to live if you're a cycler. You have a 67 mile trail that you can ride pretty unobstructed. It's designed for your hobby. Do you guys know what the loop is? Nope. Yeah, it's a bicycle loop in the middle of town. It's massive. It's awesome. It's huge. <laughs> huge. It goes over like a hundred miles actually. Yeah, it's uh -huh. 67 miles, I think the original trail. And then they've got extensions that you can ride out to massive. I used to work with a guy named Matt who would ride a hundred miles a weekend on his bike. A weekend. I didn't drive that many. And he, he would ride on his bike every weekend. But he was also 150 and looked like he was 30. So hobbies are important because you can help uh, align yourself with people. You can align with their, their hobbies and get excited about things with them. Like I happen to know BB. She talked about her partner is into painting and murals and stuff like that. And it, it anchored to me because I absolutely love street art. I love murals. I love giant art, like on the side of buildings and stuff like that. So I remembered it. So Kurt is always anchored in my brain of BB. But again, what can we utilize this information for? Building great rapport. But you got to genuinely give a damn. And then last but not least, the D. Dreams. What excites you? Um, I saw the quote again the other day. I don't remember the, the author. It's Michael something, but don't make small goals. They don't have the they don't have the power to excite the hearts of men or something along those lines. So even women. So don't small goals and small dreams don't excite us. The big scary hairy ones are the ones that we want to go after excite us. So talk about people's dreams. And what are some questions you can ask about dreams? What are your plans for this year? What are you going to do when COVID ends? It doesn't have to be 50 years in the future. It could be next week. What are you doing for the weekend? Hey, Paige, what are you doing this weekend? Right? She's, and her brain just starts ticking. Probably nothing. Because that's a, a, a reflex response we talked about yesterday. Get away from reflex responses. No, nothing. Really? Nothing? Robin, what do you want to do with your 2021? Are you going to finally get out of Joanne's? Oh yeah, right? Oh yeah, I have some big plans. So now Paige, what does Ford stand for? 
It's family, occupation, recreation, not real estate, and dreams. Dreams. It's important that we have conversations about the people we're having conversations with and not about our agenda. It's very easy for us to slip down the path of show and tell. Oh, the market's fantastic right now. The rates are super high. I sold five houses. Everything's in contract. Blah, blah, blah. Me, 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 me. And then you've alienated the person you talked to. They're like, why the hell did you call me? to talk to me about you like hey miss mara what's going on i'm wearing a purple shirt today i absolutely love it i got tan shoes on too i don't match at all it's a fantastic day talk to you soon bye what all right i want to hear a good ford call who's going to be my my ford champion today remember we're going to ask four questions in a conversation open-ended to get good responses three to who am I volunteering? Paige. Oh man. <laughs> All right. What's a go ahead and start a phone call, ring, ring, and then ask the agent. family, occupation, recreations, dreams. Okay, I'm the agent. You are the agent. And okay. Sarah, Sarah Kuhn is your client. Only because you guys are next to each other on my screen. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, there's Sarah. Hi. Hi. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi. Good morning, Sarah. It's Paige with Keller Williams. How are you? Oh, who is this? This is Paige with Keller Williams. Uh, we spoke a couple months ago about your home search in Tucson. I just wanted to check in with you. I know last time we spoke, you said that your aunt had COVID. So I was just wondering how she was doing. Oh, she's actually had it twice since then. So both times asymptomatic and she did very well. So thank you for okay. asking. Yeah, of course. That's really good to hear. Are you back to work yet? Uh, I am. Yes. Thankfully. Okay. Good, good. And what was it that you do again? Um, I am a teacher. Okay. So that must be really difficult right now. Are you, are you doing it over zoom? We're doing it both. We get to do it in Zoom, on Zoom and then we do half time at school. Okay, awesome. Which do you prefer? Uh, we prefer in person. I just, the kids really like to be together. So yeah, yeah. That's probably really tough for them to be cooped up at home. Well, that's awesome that you guys are, are back to school at least half of the time. Um, have you had any time besides, you know, outside of teaching, have you had any time to do anything fun? Oh, you're, you're doing really good, by the way. Um, yes, uh, yeah, we, we get to, we live right near Subino Canyon. So we, we go hiking a lot and take our dog. We have a new puppy and we take him for a walk and stuff, so. Perfect, I actually haven't been there yet. Is it a hard hike or is it a pretty easy one? Well, that depends. If you want to start at the very bottom and walk your way up, it can be hard, but there's a little shuttle that will take you about, you know, halfway, kind of like halfway up and you can go from there. So I've got little kids, so we do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's awesome. How old are your kids? Uh, my son just turned 10 and my daughter is eight. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And okay. So what, what is next for you? Um, what's like the next big thing? Do you have any vacation plans after COVID or just anything to look forward to? Yeah, I hopefully get to travel. I was supposed to go to Thailand um, last summer and that got canceled. So we're hoping that I get to go this year. <laughs> wow, yeah, that would be so cool. Have you been there before? Nope, it's uh, part of Asia I've not been to yet. So I hope to check that off my list okay yeah i'll definitely have to check in with you and see how that went um and if it's worth going that's awesome um cool well well thanks for for keeping me in the loop and um giving me a little insight on your life um so you know with everything that's going on have you rethought if you're going to be purchasing a home or what are your plans for that um, yeah, I don't think we're moving right now, um, but, uh, you know, we never know. We always, we always say never, and then, you know, that changes. So um, at the moment, we are happy as can be, so, but we will definitely keep you in mind. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And even if you don't want to buy or sell, if you just have any questions, you can always reach out. I'm happy to help. And um, would you be opposed to me checking back in with you in a couple months? I would love to see how your Thailand trip went. No, that'd be awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for your time, Sarah. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. You too, Paige. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.
All right, feedback. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty awesome. effortless, honestly. I think I hit so. all of them. You did. You did. You hit them all. That was pretty awesome. It was smooth. Yeah. Okay. Who's got other feedback before I jump in? Oh, God. Dan's going to yell at me about something. <laughs> no, you, you did, did great. awesome. <laughs> oh, then. Pretty, pretty genuine questions. Like uh, when you ask her, what do you like better, homeschooling or the other one, online or in person? It's pretty genuine because uh, most people jump to give their opinion. You keep asking, asking, asking. So I like the transitions. Like you just went from one question to the other, but without even hesitating, you're just mixing in the, the conversation there and you were able to hit all the four well, thanks, I think the only guys. you probably could have asked for a referral at the end. I, I maybe that's what I'm trying to think of what Dan might have to say about this. So that'd yeah. be the only thing is maybe asking for a referral. If there is anybody yeah. else that uh, is that they, they might think of to uh, buy or sell. So, but that's it. I thought you did good. Yeah, I think you did fantastic, Paige. I could tell you were uncomfortable, and that's okay because it's something you haven't done before. Three things. Open-ended questions are ones that cannot be answered with yes or no. You asked a lot of yes or no questions. Okay. Or closed-ended, which one do you like, in person or out of school? Two, when you ask a question, don't give them options. Which one do you like, <laughs> in school or you know, online? And three, just let it be a little more friendly. You don't have to be robotic on it. And that's just the biggest thing is when you can when you can take that core energy of just connecting with a friend. It came off the very beginning of the call came off a lot friendlier, and then as it progressed, it became more business. So as long as you're connecting with them on a friend level like that, hey, Mister, I love how you said, hey, you know, I remember you said your aunt had you know gotten sick. How's she doing? Did you know that Sarah, even though she's in in a script in her head, she's playing a character connected to you. She's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, no, thank you so much for asking. She's had it twice, she's doing well. Because you, when you ask an open-ended question, how's she doing? Not, is she better? Which have been yes or no. She answered with a sentence. She answered with a, a, a story behind it. So when we ask good questions, it could, you can literally have a phone call with four questions. So here it goes. Ring, ring, Miss Page. Hello. Hey, Miss Page at Big Tank, Albert Keller Williams. How are you, friend? I'm doing well, how are you? Oh, I'm living my best life. How's your family? My family's doing well. Thank you. Yeah. What are you guys doing for work these days? Um, so I am a teacher um, and my husband is a doctor. Oh, very cool. How long have you been teaching? Uh, five years. Awesome. What do you teach? Uh, kindergarten. Oh, that's got to be a lot of fun. Is, how are you dealing with the whole uh, restrictions on COVID? Yeah, it's been it's been really tough. I have kids of my own, so I'm trying to teach on the Zoom, take care of my kids. Um, my husband's working from home sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been really tough, but it keeps me busy. I can only imagine. You know, my my praise goes to you as a teacher and a mother, keeping it all together. How do you stay sane? Um, you know, I really just try to have me time. I'll uh, just go in a room, shut the door and let the kids do their thing. So I just, I have that me time. <laughs> That's important. The me time is important. What else do you do to stay busy? Um, so it's a little chilly, but I usually wait till it warms up um, in the afternoon. And I try to go for a walk or for a hike, just get outside in the sun. Oh, cool. Where do you like to hike? Um, so lately I've been doing two mock. It's, it's pretty tough, but it's a good, good workout. Man, I haven't done tuna knock. Tuna, tuna knock? I can't even talk right now. Tuna knock is so long. Is there still a ton of people going up and down? Yeah, it's really, really busy. Yeah. Well, hey, what are your big plans for the year? What are you going to do when this COVID madness goes away? Um, yeah, so we're, we're planning to go to Croatia this year. That's that's the goal. Um, we just moved in a new house, so finances are a little different, but we're going to try to make it work still. Croatia? What's in Croatia? <laughs> I don't know, but my husband wants to go there. So we're going to try and make it happen. That's awesome. I, I think it's awesome to be a world traveler. You get to see what other people live like. So that's fantastic. So, you know, hey, Paige, I, I've taken enough of your time. I really appreciate it. If there's anything I could ever do for you, it doesn't have to be real estate related. Please let me know. 
you know, I like to take care of my friends and community. So you give those kids high fives and hug your husband. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. How'd that conversation go for you? Yeah, you definitely, you asked open-ended questions and when you ask a question, you don't give them the answer, give them options. It gets them talking more. If you, if you mm -hmm. look forward and you look how much time I spent talking versus you. And the one thing that we challenge ourselves with is not responding with the story of self. You know, hey, Croatia. Oh, I love to go to Croatia. I was there last week. It was fantastic. No, make it about them. Because we want to always have a story that reverts back. Does anyone have that before? When you're talking to someone, they have a story that spikes a story that you want to talk about. No, keep that in play, but make it about the person you're talking to. And did I add real estate to that conversation? No. But did I? Well, yeah, at the end, briefly, like if you need anything. But did it make it seem like I was just calling you about real estate? No. Did I remind you I was in real estate? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit twice but the biggest thing with that is we don't always have to call and ask for referrals it's good that you do so if you have that kind of re relationship but making the call like a ford call and then going well you know well i got you on the phone who do you know that's looking to buy or sell a house it's very car salesy but when you're able to have a conversation and just lace in something about real estate you have a way better conversation you can you can gain a lot of impact I left some open-ended stuff out there. What are some areas that I could have asked more questions about, guys? Probably me buying my house. Okay. Every, every letter of the FORD was something I could have asked more questions about and gained more information and had a better report. Did you pick up on it? How old are her kids? Could ask that, right? Could have found out the age of her kids. Could have found out what her kids like. Are they into sports, right? Go down the rabbit trail. Occupation. They're both working from home. Did I ask how is it working at home? Because she, she kind of started down the path of the houses. Like they're all over each other. You can tell the frustration in her voice. We could have asked how is it working at home? Maybe that would have uncovered a real estate need. She might've said, well, it's we feel cramped and we bought this house last year, but it's just way too small from working from home. Blah, 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 right? The recreation, she went into, she likes to go for walks and to hike. We could have found out what the whole family liked to do. Bring the whole family into the picture. In the dreams, you can always go deeper on dreams, always. When do you wanna to go to Croatia? Because now we know when I get to follow up with her. If she's going in June, I'm going to call her in July. How was your trip? What'd you guys do? So be cognizant of the questions you're asking because it allows you to have deeper conversations in the long term. But you gain a lot of information about somebody's life. And what was that? Two minutes with four question sets. Family, occupation, recreations, dreams. If you have a hard time coming up with open-ended questions for those, write down 10 open-ended questions for each one. Family, how's your family, right? Very simple. That's all I said, how's your family? And you went into it. How's work? Then you went into it. One of my favorite questions on recreations, what are you doing to stay sane? It just happened to pose itself with the exact tie into that question. How do you, what are you doing to stay sane? What are you doing to stay busy? What else are you doing to keep active? There's three questions right there. Just remember those. And then dreams. What are your goals for this year? What are your hopes for this year? What are you going to do when this all ends? What are you going to do? What's the first place you're going to go when they lift travel bans? The pathway to success has been carved by the footsteps of those who walked it before us. The beautiful thing is a lot of it's recorded, most of it's written down, but it's all there for you to go research and understand and better your skill sets. So we're going to work more on basics like the forward calls, because I think it's important for you guys to have the mechanics behind making those conversations. So do you feel a little bit better about the forward call now, Paige?
Yeah, it's honestly the first time I've, I've heard that acronym, so I love it. It's great. Day one of Ignite, we talked about it. I know, I probably missed it, but... <laughs> day one of Ignite. Look back in your Ignite books, day one. Mm -hmm. It is the reason and the base of a lot of our rapport building conversations that we have those, those tie anchors to. If I call somebody and say, hey, Dave, it's Dan from Keller Williams. Dan who? Oh, you know, the, the guy we met in an open house. Okay, great. You're looking to buy a house? No. But what it is is, hey, Dave, how's your family? Who, who's this? It's Big Dan over at Keller Williams. We met at the open house. Yeah, just calling to check on you. You said that your, your mom was feeling kind of sick and I want to make sure that she's okay because during this COVID thing, you can never know. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, she actually had COVID. It was asymptomatic. She's doing fine now. Thank you for asking. Awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. How are things going at work? Right? I'm making the call about Dave, not me, not what I want. Because I know if Dave and I have a connection, then Dave and I can communicate at a higher level. Then Dave's going to remember me real estate when he's actually ready to buy or sell a house. And then the next conversation I have with Dave, I call him up and say, hey, Dave, it's Big Dan. I got two things for you. A little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure. Why don't we get the business knocked out? How's that sound? Right? Then they know what the call's about. We're going to get the business out of the way, and then we're going to set it up for some awesomeness, all right? So it is 8.30. Go out there and do some greatness with your days. Today is the viewing parties at all the market centers at 9 o'clock. If you are not doing family union, you can join us here. We're going to watch Gary speak. There's going to be some food, some snacks, some greatness, and I'd love to see you here if you can. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, maybe. Yeah, tomorrow morning. We start at 9. Let me look at the Ignites here, the schedule at Family Union. 8 a.m. Live all. So, yeah, we'll be here tomorrow. On the Family Reunion agenda, are the times, are we an hour behind the Mountain Standard? We or are Mountain Standard. We are Mountain Standard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are Mountain Standard. Um, Gary will speak live, right, on the Family Reunion page? Yeah. Family Reunion under the vision address at 9 a.m. Thank you. Dan, can we still uh, get family reunion for the $80? Email Jay right now. I emailed him yesterday. Should I just like follow up? Yeah, call his ass. Be like, did you I did the same on? thing, actually. And I called him too. And uh, <laughs> no word. Okay, let me, let me handle that right now. So I'm going to put his ass on blast from the entire company channel. <laughs> <laughs> Group chat with all leadership. Hey, Jay, did you get those agents into? All right. Hopefully I get an answer from him. I'll push him that way. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Happy Purple Shirt Tuesdays.